come on, come on, come on, come on. Finally! Yeah, I did it! Hey guys, this is Oli and today's video is all about arena or as I like to call it PvP. We're going player versus player. It is one of the most fascinating game modes in Rivengard. It's one of the most rewarding game modes, especially after some of the recent changes where you can score orbs just by doing well in arena. And if you want to finish in the top 10 of the Legend League or you at least want to get closer to that 95 win chest, this is the video for you, my friend. There is a lot we have to get through, so let's not waste any time and delve right in. So this is how it's going down. This is my squad. I'm just placing them in the right position. And then you can see we're going in on one side, start a bit of a setup, go in on the other side, more setup. Tanama goes in, hits everybody, almost everybody's dead. And then there's an attack from Tim Tim. And that's basically all she wrote. That's already the end of this arena match. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. They're like, wait a second, that's not how the force works. More often than not, you're not ending up being on such a fortunate map and it doesn't go exactly that way. However, the general idea of arena match is exactly what we just saw. Soften up the opposition, affect as many units as possible, make them weaker for the other units to kill them. Then you go in with someone who can take them out. And then if you have to, you basically take a second shot. This is roughly where your plan B comes in. Plan B more often than not happens to be Akio because he's really, really good with the summons that your other units can spawn. Now we're already getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're talking about metagame, which units are format defining. Let's rewind a little bit, go back to step one. That is soften up the opposition. You want to first play unit that can affect as many units on the other side of the board and weaken them. We've already seen in the clips just now that Dix is an absolute beast in arena. It's an S tier unit without a doubt because he's super flexible. He's ranged, that's really good. He's a rogue, that's really good because most of the extremely dangerous units in arena happen to be mages. We gonna talk about Dorga, no worries guys. And then the other thing is he's got a passive that just makes it so much easier for your other units to kill the board. There's a second unit that is roughly as good as Gix, almost as good as Gix, in some cases even better than Gix, and it's a very underappreciated unit. The reason is that it's super hard to level up that unit, or so you might believe. I mean, it's hard to get the Ascension materials, but that's true for almost all the units in Rivengard. The unit I'm talking about is Pari. Let's really drive that point home by looking at a second PvP fight. So this is me training my units basically, and this time I'm bringing in Pari to show you guys what this unit can do. Pari is so strong even at rare level. So we go in with Gigs first, then we soften up the opposition some more, this time with a Tim Tim, and now there's even Voyasa, I wanted to train her a little bit and look at what Pari does. Pari is taking out two units with one shot and Dogger is basically dead. And then after that, this is just like trying to get some more XP for all of my units. And we are not looking at like some epic Pari, some legendary Pari. This is a level 19 Pari, a level 19 Pari as a rare can already take out two opposing units. Yes, we put in some work with some other attacks, but she's setting everybody up for the kill. There's another thing about Pari that is really important. That is the fact that she can block, which is very important in Arena. Because we talked about the general strategy, soften up, go in for the kill, call plan B if plan A fails, and then sometimes the opponent does survive another turn and they can hit you back, obviously. Or if you're on the wrong map, they can hit you from the very first turn on and you cannot connect with them for whatever reason. Then it's very important to be able to fight back. And there's one thing that helps you fight back and that is, of course, blocking. Blocking is really, really important in Arena. Looking at this fight, we can see my typical strategy. I'm going in, everybody connects. I'm almost taking out the entire opposing team with my my first set of attacks but one unit stands strong and that is Akio, the most hated unit in Tripitaka's team for mostly everybody because look at this, block, block, <laughs> there's another block, here's another attack, he just blocks again, what is happening, can you go down, no, he can even block crit hits, what is happening, but eventually there's just so much force, so many units that are enough to overwhelm Akio, but you can see how much of a difference a block can make. This is another reason why Pari is such a strong unit in PvP. 
Speaking of blocking, we're still talking about units that can help set up the kill on the opposing side of the board. That is Sunshine. Sunshine is another rogue, the only other rogue next to Parry that can block. And while his passive is not as strong as Parry's passive, that helps you do more damage, his active is where Sunshine shines. Uh, he can affect all five units on the other side of the board if they are like huddling together in the correct way. There's two more units that we need to talk about here. One of them is Tim Tim. We've already saw that in uh, my clips, but Tim Tim is not like as strong as the other ones when it comes to setting up kills. Tim Tim is very flexible to try and make up for that. And then the last unit we cannot forget. One of the absolute stars, the absolute powerhouses in PvP happens to be Nimrod. Nimrod is an absolute beast the crit machine he's just going in and wiping the board more often than not i have seen one nimrod take out four units after i went in and i thought i had already won that match what's the only unit standing on the other side of the board and then just nimrod on his own is evening the odds it's such a strong unit so we talked about softening up the opposition and which units are best for that now we're going to step number two and step number two is going in for the kill we have seen a couple of units that are really good in that regard which basically need to take it back to the step one because Nimrod happens to be like two things at once he can be used to soften up the opposition and spread some darkness which is also important but he's also great at just going in for the kill Nimrod is extremely flexible and without a question like S tier in arena Nimrod is the de facto king of PvP and every king needs a queen some would say well Queen Akesho makes sense no of course not it's Tanamo Tanamo is the absolute queen of PvP my favorite unit in the game thanks to her intelligent aim she's going after the opponent one after another like lambs being brought to the slaughter she's moving up the chain from the weakest to the strongest we can see that in this clip here tanamo on her own can easily take out four units and for whatever reason she spared my vera's life here to give akio something to take down otherwise it would be five units all killed by tanamo there are very few other units that are as easy to level as gigs and tanamo just because they take out so many units and of course nimbrul another unit that is absolutely great at this shop is my vera she's not as good as tanamo because she doesn't have to have the intelligent aim but that of course makes sense because my vera is a ranged unit so it would be completely bonkers if that unit on top of being able to shoot down several opponents and always making sure that she's going from the weakest to the strongest that is not the case for good reason last but not least an extremely flexible unit that serves a couple of purposes but can be used as a very strong finisher thanks to her active is queen akeshru she's very flexible we talked about that in the spotlight of queen akeshru she can also be used to fight back the orgas and stuff and spawn shades everywhere make it really hard for the opponent to connect with your team because they're basically being preoccupied with the shades however her active needs to be talked about it is one of the stronger finishers that can also take out several units that are all standing in one long line and then again if you're moving in with Akio after that turn the shades into killing machines it's very easy for you to win the match having good units is just one piece of the puzzle that is arena if you don't have any of the units i talked about so far even though that's kind of unlikely don't worry it's not the most important thing in arena the number one thing in riven guard arena is map size there is nothing else that is as important as map size even if you don't have all the important units it does not matter the thing that matters the most is the kind of map you're playing on now if it's a close combat map where all or almost all of your units can connect with all or almost all of your opponent's units on the first turn those should be auto wins regardless of your opponent as long as there's not some crazy stuff happening with some shrubs in the way or some thorns that are blocking you from moving to the front you should 100% win almost all of your matches against opponents on these maps there's a second kind of map that is almost as easy and those are larger maps so here we see a large map and though we cannot connect on the very first turn the strategy stays the same we want to go in soften up the opposition and then after they've taken a couple of hits and they are almost dead we want to move in and kill them all so here we're first going with tim tim for the sole reason that tanamo tries to evade the attack of tim tim which makes it easier for us to then really connect with Tanamo. So in this case, we even 
were lucky because Sanamo is moving closer to Dorga, which means now we can move in with first Gigs. Again, we talked about Gigs, he's so good. And then Dorga. And we get infinite summons out of Dorga. And after that, it's an absolute walk in the park. And then, as always, Sanamo, my favorite unit, just goes and plays cleanup. And that is basically it. So, while this map is basically three times the size of the close combat maps, the strategy stays the same. Things get a lot more complicated as soon as we're talking about mid-range maps. Those are the kind of maps where some of your units can connect on the first turn, but not all of your units. And then on the opponent's turn, some of them can connect with your guys, but maybe also not all of them. So you're always like thinking about, do I go in with everybody? Do I not go in with everybody? And then it's a, a big question of what units do you have and what strategy works for the respective map. So in this particular case, we can bring Granny in, we can then move in with Gigs, and then actually we're, we're moving forward. It looks pretty good, but Dogger survives. So normally that's a big problem, but here Dogger cannot go for the gigantic summon spawn where you see infinite tadpoles on the field because you can only connect with Queen Akeshru. And then after that, it is again a walk in the park. But you already saw I had to play a very, very different team. I had to bring in some other units that I did not play before. And that is why one of the most important things is having a couple of units that you can tag in and out depending on the map size. This video is three minutes long, but I'm only showing you one and a half minutes because the first one and a half minutes, I thought about what to do on this map. So I tried to go for Tim Tim to have both my Vara and Akeshru move forward because then everybody would have lined up for one gigantic attack with Queen Akeshru. That would have been something else. Unfortunately, my Vara didn't move in the right spot. But then the active of Queen Akeshru is absolutely great against Tanamo because she's a light unit and the active does double damage against light units. After that, you can go, go in with my Vera, which happens to be a red rogue that is really strong against blue mages. So Tim Tim is going down. And after that, even though it wasn't ideal, we can go for Arceo just for one unit, but we're getting rid of my Vera. Suddenly it's a two versus five. That's as one-sided as it gets in PvP. And we are basically in the green now because there's some darkness in the middle that is blocking Dorga from moving to the other side. Side. And now I'm thinking about what's the correct move. The correct move would be to just go one step backwards with Queen Akeshru, then attack with Akio. Because if Dogger goes for the special, she can at a maximum get only two frogs. So that's really, really good for us. I'm making the mistake of going too far backwards with Queen Akeshru, but in the end it doesn't matter. Now Dogger could have gotten three frogs, but apparently my Vera was strong enough to just take out Dogger. And that's the end of that match. So you can see, coming up with the right strategy for the respective map you're playing is the absolute number one thing in Rivengard. Let's look at some more specialized map strategies where you can really see how important that really is. This map right here is a dream come true for players that happen to have Gigs and Tim Tim. You can move in with Gigs because he can just walk over the water. Then Tim Tim can connect with everybody on the other side of the board. His active is doing massive damage to almost all of the opponents because they're standing next to water. And then you don't even have to go in here with Akio and pull the trigger. You can just wait for Pari to shoot. Doesn't really matter. And then after that, it's a walk in the park for your units. There's absolutely nothing that the opponent can do, but we can again see how important it is being able to block some damage. In the end, doesn't matter, Pari goes down. This map right here is just called Tim Tim Island and we will see in a second why. You can just go in again with Gigs, you can go in with Tim Tim. Again, everybody's standing next to water and that already gives you like a gigantic army of dudes that can attack and then it's a two versus five, so even if your opponent is as strong as Tripitaka, who like friendly Tripitaka because she was training her darkness team, which is not as strong as her regular team, you can go in and it's basically more or less a walk in the park and you can collect some big XP for your own units. Normally I wouldn't recommend going up against Tripitaka, but this is one of those maps where you can do it if you happen to have Tim Tim. Over time, you will start to have a plan for each individual map in Rivengard. On this map, for example, I'm always softening up the opponent with 
gigs without the special for once and then I'm moving in with Dogger for maximum effect getting a lot of tadpoles. Then you can do some more damage with Tanamo. If there's no Akio in the space that he is right now, you can even take out three or four units with Tanamo. And then obviously in the end, it's Akio together with Dogger. And that just gives you a massive advantage after the first turn. It's again a five on two rather than a five versus five. So yes, I, if, you, if you're wondering, is this guy a freak? Does he have a plan for every single map? I would say almost. I kind of have this figured out and for every single map in the game I have like a dedicated strategy that gives me like maximum effect. Normally you don't really need that for the easier maps in the game that are very close combat but for the ones that are like medium sized you want to have a dedicated strategy and know which units to tag in, which units to tag out and how you want to approach the specific map. The by far worst maps in Rivengard, without a question, are the maps where you can connect with some of your units on the first turn, but not with all of your units. At the same time, your opponent is going to be able to strike back with all of his units that are still surviving after the first turn. He might have the high ground on top of that, and he might have some sort of advantage with some bushes or something. And all of that comes together in one gigantic burger of crap, and that is this particular map. This is the worst map in Rivengard without a doubt. 50% of my losses is on this map and in a gigantic season in the Legend League you need to go almost undefeated. Last season when I finished in the top 10 I had three losses over the course of the entire season and one or two of those losses were on that map and this happens every season. I hate this map with everything I've got. So you have to play very very carefully. Here I was playing my parry that's still the level 26 rare parry that I kind of tagged in for maps like this. She's like a specialist for the especially challenging maps and this is the one where parry is great and absolutely shines because she can help set up some kills against Dogger, which otherwise would have won this match for my opponent here. So now we're thinking about the next move. It's very, very careful approach. We need to make sure that Sir Florianus doesn't stay around because his passive is so strong. Then we have a gigantic Dogger summon. And at this point, after Tim Tim's specialist gun, we know that we won the match, but we can just finish it outright with some more attacks. So maps are absolutely crucial. They are the most important thing for success or loss. In Arena, there is something you can do about maps, especially about maps like the one we just saw, and that is of course thinking about the metagame in general, which units are being played, and team composition. That's what we're going to talk about next. The metagame in Rivengard Arena is being dominated by two units. They are basically dictating almost everything in Arena. One of them everybody knows. Everybody knows that this is the best unit in the game. It's of course Dogger. However, the other unit should not be underestimated. The other day a friend of mine, Virus, said, hey, let's do a game where we're basically picking Rivengard units. We're leaving out Dogger because she's the best unit in the game. Everybody who had the chance would first pick that unit. And then I told him I would not. And he was surprised. He said, why would you not first pick Dogger? And I said, Dogger is nice on her own. She can win games on her own. She can turn games around after you thought you have lost. But there's one unit that makes every other unit better that they are playing with and that is Akio. Akio is the core foundation of a couple of strategies. In this match this is basically the squad that I used to play all the way from the lowest league to something like Grand Champion League before I ever started opening any legendary heroes because it just so happens that Akio can almost turn a potato into a killing machine. That's how strong this unit is. We're going in here this time with Sunshine softening up the opposition then Geeks can come in I'm trying to get as many frogs as possible. Didn't happen this time around, but no big deal because Sir Matt gives me two more summons with 100% guarantee. It's not like Geeks or Dogger where you're not sure what you're getting. And then Arceo turns everybody into a killing machine and the opposition is going down. Now there is a Tanamo, but Tanamo on her own can also not exactly win a match unless she's like way higher in terms of leveling than your opponent or after you've done some softening up, which didn't really happen here because all of the opposition was almost all of the opposition was taken out after the very first turn. And you can see how good Akio is as soon as you put him to work. At the very beginning, I thought, why would I want to lose my summons? But if the opponent is dead afterwards, it doesn't really matter that you're losing. Losing. Shun. It really doesn't make a difference because you're winning the match. This is not great for festival points, but that's the only reason why you would not want to pull the trigger on Akio. 
The great thing about Akio is he's extremely flexible. You don't have to play him with Dogger, you don't have to play him with Kicks. Akio works in every team that is using a lot of summons. That of course is also true for the Darkness team, which we've seen back in the days when I showed you guys what Umanu can do. This is one of the PvP videos from back then, where you can go in with Prina Keshru, spread some darkness, Umanu just spreads it some more, and then suddenly you get Runner Clue, you got infinite shades, and what's going to happen next? You are going for Arceo, and then all of the shades attacking, and it's like a walk in the park for your squad. So, there's a couple of of teams where Arceo really shines. The first one, everything that works with summons. If you want to play the best units in the game, of course, play Giggs, play Dorga, that makes a lot of sense. If you happen to have them, play Nimrul together with Granny, that's also a really cool dream team, even though they are from warring factions. But Nimrul goes in, gets a couple of kills, Granny raises some skeletons, and then you pull the trigger on Arceo, the skeletons turn more units into skeletons, and they even survive until the next turn, so you already have a presence on the board. And that's just with three units, you can bring any other two units into that team. If you're going for a dedicated darkness team, there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that you're benching Ryasa. But you can play Queen Akeshru, you can play Nimrul, you can play Umanu, Runner Clue, and of course the fifth unit again is Akio. All of those are valid teams for PvP. All of those are gonna guarantee you 95 wins even in the Legend League as long as you're putting in some work and you're getting your units to level like 30, 34, something like that. You can compete even with the best opponents in the game. You're gonna be able to get those 95 wins if you have a team with a strong synergy. There's one last team composition that makes a gigantic difference in Arena and it has the advantage that no matter what the map is, this team is flexible, packs a punch and will almost always win. And that is any team built around Naevis the Ranger. Now I talked about this unit in lots of detail in a character spotlight. It's a bit long, I know, but I'm trying to really walk you through it and show you everything you need to know about this particular unit. Naevis is an absolute beast in PvP because all of the mid-range maps that I spent so many hours talking about earlier, where you cannot connect with all of your units on the first turn. And I told you, this is why it's so hard to win on these maps. All of that is just like out the window as soon as Naevis comes in. Naevis allows you to connect with units that you otherwise would not be able to connect with. It allows more of your units because sometimes there's a map where only one or two spots can really get your units into the range where they can connect. With Naevis no problem, everybody can suddenly connect and you can even hit them where it hurts the most. You can take care that Queen Akeshru, even if a light unit is very far away, you can target that light unit thanks to the extra range with Naevis. It's such a powerful unit and it's actually true for both on offense as well as on defense. If you've ever played in arena against a team that is playing Naevis, you might have gotten caught off guard because when you look at the danger zone, it very often does not take into account how far your opponent can shoot thanks to Naevis because sometimes Naevis is not standing next to the ranged unit. So I've had losses where I just didn't see it coming that my opponent was already able to connect with my units. And if you pair Naevis with the right units, with, like I said, Queen Akeshro, Tim Tim is not bad, Gix is amazing with Naevis, or oh, Myvera, you can do so much damage with Naevis, and you're gonna cruise through some of the levels that I absolutely hate because I prefer to go for the close combat modes with a breeze. It's just such a breeze with Naevis in PvP. So those are my three recommendations for the strongest team in PvP. Either you're basing your strategy around Akio with a lot of summons courtesy of Dorga or a Granny together with Nimrul or a Giggs or all of them together mashed into one team. All of that works, no problem. Akio is just like holding it all together or you're basing your team around the darkness squad where you want to spread some darkness, spread it some more with Umanu, go in with Runner Clue, create infinite shades and then Akio if you happen to have him again pulls the trigger and that gives you the win. Or last but certainly not least, Naevis based strategies where you can connect with your opponent regardless of map size. You're almost bound to have the upper hand in almost every map and that saves you a lot of brain cells because you don't have to think about five minutes how you you're gonna attack because everybody on your team is going to be able to connect regardless. 
So that's basically how the metagame in PvP shades up. Now there's one big elephant in the room, I mentioned this unit a million times before, it's Dorga. Why is Dorga the best unit in PvP overall? Why does everybody hate to go up against Dorga? The reason is that we talked about different things that you want to do in PvP and Dorga can just do it all. You want to set up the opponent for a kill? Send in Dorga. Get some summons, they're gonna do a little bit of damage, opponent is set up for a kill. You want to finish the opponent off. Go in with Dorga, get some summons. Summons can finish the opponent off if they have to. If they didn't, use, use Akio. They are dead, 100% guaranteed, unless you got super unlucky with the summons. And then we also talked about what happens if your opponent is going first. If you made some miscalculations, you couldn't take them all out. Opponent is going in, all of his units are trying to kill your guys. If one unit happens to survive the onslaught and is going to be able to turn it around, which unit is that going to be? Well, of course. Dorga again. It's just the jack of all trades in arena. Dorga can help you win games, she can outright win you games and she can also win you games that you thought you have lost already. Dogger is the absolute star in PvP and that is why every time you're going up against any team with a Dogger on the squad, you should focus all of your efforts, I know how this sounds, on Dogger. Every time I haven't done this, I have lost matches. Every time I was like, okay, I can take out four other units and then there's only Dogger remaining. I'm gonna win this 100%. Dogger goes in, it was a level 50 Dogger and then suddenly I'm screwed and I'm losing the match. The last thing you need to do well in Arena is you need to understand how the system works. The most important thing is that you need to play early. The less you have played, the more points you can get per win. So here, for example, it's rather early in the season. That's why it says six days, two hours remaining. And now for one win, I can actually get 93 points. That's not bad. Now, the other thing that you need to understand is how to read the strength of an opponent. Now, the total power level can give you a really good indication of how strong an opponent is. In Legend League 160,000 is not all that much. You can see at the top my squad is 360,000. That is one of the, relatively speaking, weaker squads in the top 20 of Legend League. But that doesn't mean that you cannot win against someone who is like 700,000 strong because as I said, on the right map with the right strategy, you can take out the strongest players in the game. So here what we need to look for is of course the gear level. That's the most important thing. We see that Voldrim has a Tanamo that is only silver rank 3 and he's got a Queen Akeshu that is only happened to be silver rank 1. And as you learn in my Ascension Guide video, the level of a unit doesn't really matter all that much. It's all about the gear. So that means that we can completely ignore all almost completely ignore, the Queen Akeshu. She's not going to be a gigantic problem. The Tanamo is going to be strong, but not strong enough to just like run through our entire squad. Gix is also not going to be like massively strong. So we can see that here you can check out the units just by clicking on them. And then you see also the rarity. This is just a rare Queen Akeshu, which means she's capped at level 26. So that's relatively easy to beat. So now we go into the match and then as always, you need to think about positioning and everything. And in the end, I'm happy with this lineup because if I'm moving here a little bit to the side, I'm sure that they are going to come in they cannot do massive damage and that means that i can now have a summon at the very top Summon can connect soften up granny which was one of the strongest units on the other side of the board and now i can basically win this match normally gigs would be somewhat um going immediately after tanamo here it makes more sense to go first with Tim Tim, as you can see, Tanamo can no longer block. And then it's just a walk in the park for Tanamo because all of the units that were remaining on the left side of the board were not strong enough to deal with like a level 40 Tanamo that I was playing at the time. She may or may not be a little bit stronger right now. So to wrap it all up, at the very end of this video, I'm showing you how I basically finished last season. This was the last match. I was very nervous because I was only in ninth place. I had a few more tickets, but this was basically the one match for all the marbles. Because if you happen to lose towards the end, you're going to get kicked out. You're not going to make top 10 and seven days of your life. Feels like a waste. It wasn't exactly a waste. It was quite fun most of the time if it wasn't on that weird map. 
But this is basically it. This is the one deciding match. If I'm winning this, I'm in the top 10 with like almost 100%. If I'm losing this, I am out of the top 10. I could have also risked not playing, but I didn't want to. I wanted to basically finish strong with another victory. So we're going in with gigs. As always, I, I told you this, guys. You've seen this a million times. We got some more set up with um, Dorga, and now you already have to feel good because this looks like a match that you can win. I'm thinking about do I want to go for the special of Tim Tim or do I rather want to use Tim Tim on the Sir Matt? In the end, I'm deciding that it makes a lot more sense to go for Sir Matt because that then means that we can have another unit that is almost dead as soon as Tanamo comes in. Uh, or rather, in this case, the summons. I can even go with Akio. They need to pull the trigger on Akio. And this is it. And in the end, I think I'm on seventh place after this match. You can see again, the position doesn't get updated right away. This is, like I said before, I think there's a moment that the system needs to refresh. And if you go back to leaderboard, you will see, oh, suddenly I'm in sixth place. I'm no longer in ninth place. This is something a bit weird. If you go back to battle sometimes, it also refreshes your opponents. So I hope you guys have an idea of how Arena in Riven Guard is being played. I know this was a lot to get through. I know we still didn't really talk about some of the issues that also come into play in Arena. But in the end, it all comes down to the map and having a team that does well on that particular map. If you have a core squad and you're feeling quite happy with it and you want to think about what other units should I train, I encourage you to give Naevis a second look. If you don't have Naevis in your main lineup in PvP, she makes a world of a difference and gets you ever closer to that 95 victory chest. If you feel like I didn't talk about something that you want to learn more about, leave a comment below the video. Let me know what problems you're facing in Arena and maybe I can help you out. You can also join the official Discord of Riven Guard, where lots of players are chiming in and trying to help you get better at the game. Or you can also join the Discord of my squad Eternal Nexus, where even though we're being quite competitive, we're sharing some of our best insights with guys like you so you can also get better and maybe one day become part of our squad. So I see you guys either there on the Discord or in the arena in Riven Guard, even though you now know how to beat my squad, but that's all right. I'm still going X3 next season again and finishing the top. I cannot even say it without a straight face.